Sports correspondent Victor Howell sat down with Saints reporter Sarah Polcheski to look at what's next for the black and gold. Finally, some good news for the black and gold. They get a win for the first time in now eight weeks. And who better to talk about it with us than Sarah Polcheski? She's based out of Baton Rouge with NBC and Fox, WVLA and WGMB, and is the Saints beat reporter. Sarah, thanks for coming in. Hey, we're finally talking good news. Absolutely. With the it's finally fun to talk about the Saints <laughs> again. It's been a while. It, it has been a while. And look, we know they beat Atlanta. That's the big news. But the bigger news is the fact that they made a coaching change uh, midseason, something the Saints are not known for doing. But Dennis Allen has let go. Darren Rizzi comes in. You're with the team. What was what's the vibe been like after that move was made leading up to and then through finally getting a win? We kind of talked about it as a media group that you couldn't tell that the locker room wasn't fun it, until that coaching change because once they made that change it was a lot more lively. Guys seemed to be having a lot more fun the, and the rearranging of the locker room by interim head coach Darren Rizzi seemed to have a huge payoff. The defensive line group having fun with it making their area a little club area and that wasn't noticeable. We all thought that it was a fun locker room throughout the season, even when, when they were dominating in weeks one and two. But it really was actually those players just seemed like they were punching the clock to get in and get out. And now it just – you can see the energy shift from Darren Rizzi in that locker room. Guys are having fun again. They're playing basketball again. They're joking. They're laughing. They're actually hanging out in there, something that they weren't doing to start the season. And I guess it shows you that sometimes the little things can mean a lot because little things behind the scenes like just rearranging players and, and where they're sitting. Uh, and, and Rizzi, he's a unique guy. And, and I know in his, in his opening press conference he talked about, hey, I'm a fighter. I was Division two. I was a walk-on. I had to – you know, free agent in the NFL. I started in D2 working his way up. So he's got a little spunk that looks like it carries over and influences these players. I think one of the big things the players kind of keep saying about Rizzi is he's authentically himself. He hasn't changed since he took over as head coach, as interim head coach for the Saints. He's always been the same guy he's been since day one back in training camp, and that's something that really resonates with the players. And his energy and type of – he's a huge accountability guy. And during a losing streak, you need someone to keep you accountable. And that really resonated with the players. And on top of that, him being a special teams coordinator, he has a relationship with pretty much everyone in that mm -hmm. locker room. And on top of that, even the players who don't play special teams said – I have a relationship with him, too. He always gives me a hug when I see him. He's just one of those guys that the players really can follow behind and lead. Let me ask about one of the guys who might have bought in right away, and that's Alvin Kamara, because beginning of the season, all the talk was about his house being listed. Everybody thought he wanted to be traded. He wanted out of New Orleans. He's now signed a long-term agreement, has an outstanding game, and most importantly for him and people like you, I know, will notice, he now has a C on his chest. Yeah, and I think a huge part of that buy-in also, it kind of says a lot about Kamara signing that contract extension during that losing streak, saying, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be in. And he'd be here for the long haul. And him being awarded a captain by Rizzi this past week really just was a long time coming and shows he was a leader this whole time. He's not a big rah rah guy. He says that himself. He doesn't talk a lot. He just wants people to follow what he does. He comes in, works hard, does his job and he wants to be there for his teammates. And that resonated with Rizzi. He was one of the first guys to really buy into what Rizzi was telling them that they have to do to be able to dig themselves out of the hole they already put themselves right, in. Right. And he was rewarded with that captainship. And Rizzi said that once he was, that was announced to the team, he got a huge round of applause. People were very happy for him. And that's not a surprise knowing how Kamara is and how respected he is among his teammates. Well, when you talk about the instant reaction and the acceptance of the players to Rizzi, his enthusiasm, do you think he's the kind of guy that could work his way into the full-time position? Or do you think the Saints are going to ride him and his enthusiasm to try to dig out of a seven-game skid and then, and then look elsewhere? It's tough to really know what the Saints will do just because making a midseason coaching change doesn't happen. The last right. time they did that and fired a coach was 1980. Before that, it was 1996. And so there is no real precedent to understand where the Saints will go. It wouldn't surprise me if Rizzi does get the Saints back on a win streak and somehow make it competitive near the end of the season that he might be more considered. I also wouldn't be surprised if they decide to go in a different direction and just kind of blow the whole thing up in a sense and bring somebody fresh and new in that hasn't been there before that can maybe get them back on the right path and do something different. Yeah, and that's one of those phrases I know a lot of people say as we wrap up, you talk about blowing it up. You've already lost Lattimore because of the trade, huge salary cap, but salary cap is a dark cloud over this team. There are a lot of fan favorite players. You might want to get used to seeing them now because you might not be seeing them in the black and gold in the future. I think, well, a lot of their older players are about at the time of their contract running out a couple of years. I don't think the Saints can necessarily blow it up just because of how their salary cap situation is. I don't think they're complete, completely resetting the bar, but I would 
expect that in a couple years you will start to see some new faces and that maybe the Saints start to shift away from signing their veteran players to longer-term contracts like they have been. Well, the Saints have Cleveland coming up, and you know what? If they can keep winning, let's keep talking because it's nice to actually talk fun <laughs> with the black and gold. Sarah Polcheska, I appreciate you joining us, and good luck uh, this weekend and the rest of the season with the Saints. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.